There's an old saying that it's not the tool, but the craftsman, and that knowledge weighs nothing. Today, we're really gonna go into what that actually means as we go over the knowledge and how to use all of the most basic tools that are key to bushcraft, fieldcraft, and your survival. Now, a lot of this might seem common sense. You might think you know how to use an ax, a saw, or a knife. But I promise you, there's a lot more to it and a lot of tips and tricks that can really help you understand how to use these tools. So with that, on this beautiful spring day, let's get into it. Knowing how to correctly use our basic tools really can be the difference between life and death. You don't want to figure out what works and what doesn't, especially with objects such as knives, saws and axes. I often like the saying that a knife, once deployed, has no friends and you've got to treat it with respect. The same goes for a saw and an axe. You're far more likely to injure yourself with these tools than you are any other danger out there. And the last thing you want is a cut that can get infected or worse, some sort of serious hemorrhage or deep cut that can cause serious bleeding. So with that in mind, let's talk about safety. Safety with these tools are absolutely paramount. As we discuss them, I'll be going through a way that you can safely handle and use these tools. But as always, be cautious of how you deploy them, how you use them, and never use a tool when you're tired. You might have to in certain situations, but if you can avoid it, by using the other skills such as being hydrated, well fed, well rested, your chances of an accident are lowered dramatically. So with that, let's discuss our first tool, which is going to be the knife. When it comes to our knife, it's by far the most crucial and basic piece of equipment and everyone should have one. A good thing to remember is your knife is your life. With a knife, we can cater to ourselves as an individual and ensure that we survive. We can find food, make shelter, make fire, and thus purify water as well. When it comes to our knives, a good bushcraft knife is a must. Tactical knives, Swiss Army knives, we can, we'll go over those, but what you want is a good bushcraft knife. I'm a big fan of the Mora knives of Sweden. We have two different kinds here, but these are very cheap. They're very, very good. I'm a huge fan of them. First thing about a knife is we want to be very careful when removing it from the sheath. A lot of holst, uh, sheaths will have certain retention, some will have clips, but mostly it will be a simple friction retention. As always, we want to first loosen the knife and then carefully remove it. We don't want to fondle around, we want to loosen with a push of the thumb and then carefully remove the knife from the sheath. A lot of these sheaths have little uh, thumb placements. We want to first loosen. This one's brand new, so a little bit stiff, and then remove. When retrieving a pocket knife, the same principle applies. We first want to remove the knife, get it into a safe position in the palm of our hand, face the blade away from us, and then deploy the knife however that knife is designed to be deployed. When putting it away, this one is a thumb press. You want to slowly release and then bend into your hand. If that makes you uncomfortable, another trick is we can press in, loosen it, 
and then we can use our body to safely sheath the knife and then put it away. When using knives such as Fusami knives, the same principle applies. We want to face the knife in a safe direction, slowly loosen and deploy away from us. Don't ever deploy a knife into your body or into someone else. When it comes to passing a knife to a friend, be very wary of who you loan your knife to. The worst thing you can do is come back and have your knife edge all bezeled and destroyed. So if you are gonna lend a knife, make sure the person you're lending it to knows how to respect knives and how to use them. If you do have to pass a knife to somebody, the best way is to hold it in the palm of your hand, flip it over with the blade facing away from you and the handle towards the recipient. Let's go over the parts of the knife. So we have our sheath, we then have our knife. We have the grip, many different styles, materials and types. The Mora knives are designed almost like kitchen knives or for a nice comfortable grip in the hand. We then have the pommel, which is the end of the knife. Some knives, these may be made of brass. We then have a guard, which minimal on the Mora knife. More pronounced on this one. We then come to our blade, our edge, you can see on this knife, the edge comes all the way across the length of the knife. Sometimes, sometimes this may not be the case, but the Mora knife blades are good all round purpose blades. At the top of the blade, we have a 90 degree angle and carbon steel, which is good for fire lighting. Something that might not seem obvious is which part of the knife we actually cut with. Oftentimes we're going to use the first one and a half inches of the knife. This is because closer to our wrist, our hand, we have more dexterity and control. We can also produce the most amount of power by using this part of the knife as well. The edge of the knife is gonna be used for making holes and divots, but we very rarely use this part of the knife. The working part is the inner part here. Now let's talk about some basic cuts that you need to know with the knife. The first type of cut or grip will be done with what's called the forehand. Holding the knife like so in a forehand position. Using the cutting part of the knife we just discussed about three inches away from your work as to not be out here to cause leverage or too close that you risk cutting yourself. The forehand grip can be used either freely like this or reinforced at which we'll straighten our arm and push down with our body weight like so. And that creates a very sharp, what I like to call a power cut. Next is going to be the backhand grip. We're going to grip the knife reverse. This is a very rare grip and you won't use it often, but it can be used when you're with a friend or you need to cut something. In which case, the person with the knife has a control pointing away from that other person. Next is going to be the chest lever grip. For the chest lever grip, we're going to grab the knife in a forehand position, our work, bring it into our chest at a 45 degree angle. And the chest lever grip is nice when we have to do detailed work and we have to look closely. We are then going to simultaneously pull away from our work and push the knife into the work, allowing the blade to do the cutting. Like so. The last type of grip is the reinforced grip. This is when we have our knife and our thumb and we're simultaneously pushing down into the work. This is very good if you have to be very accurate, as using your hand and your thumb to control the blade and the amount of force is very, very easy to do with this type of cut. 
next we're going to go over two types of cuts. So the first is going to be how to make a notch, good for cooking or hanging objects. Second is going to be how do we accurately cut a stick in half using our knife. First though, making points are simple. You are going to make a four edge point using our forehand grip. Once we've cut four edges, we can then use our reinforced grip to slowly carve away and make those edges, edges more rounded and almost bullet shaped. If it's dead wood, this is fantastic, but if it's green wood and we want it to last a while, we can actually warm up the wood in a fire, get the moisture out, and this will help preserve that wood. Next is going to be our notch. To make a notch, we are simply going to start by cutting an X formation. Pressing into wood, working back and forth. Once we have our X, we are then going to use our reinforced grip to chip away the wood that we just made in that X pattern. Very slowly, it's working away the wood. You can see how accurate the reinforced grip is for this type of work. Next, if I have to cut this in half, what I'm going to do is find where I want to cut it. Using my reinforced grip, I'm going to go all the way around the wood, cutting ever so slightly into the wood. I'm then going to come to the other side and cut in further again to the area that I just cut. That's how we can accurately cut a stick in half using just our knife. A good rule of thumb with all of these tools is if you're rushing, if you're tired, stop and think. Take a moment. Don't rush and fumble for your knife. Don't go to quickly cut something with your saw. Just like when we're doing anything else in the field, be slow and methodical. Again, you do not want an injury. Cutting yourself or an infection is the worst thing that can happen. When using any of these tools, I'm a big fan of, hand, of having a bandage on me. There was actually a time where I sliced open my hand. I was maybe 13 years old, but I had a bandage on me. and I was able to immediately stop that bleeding and go seek further help. If I didn't have that bandage, I actually ended up needing stitches. So have a bandage on you. Be slow, methodical, think. Don't force anything, especially with a blade. If the blade isn't doing its job, it's because of one of two reasons. It's your technique, or you're trying to cut something that isn't meant to be cut, or in a way that you're not meant to cut it. Now that we've discussed the basics of a knife, let's move on to our next tool. Once you've got the knife down, you're going to want to get one of these, and this is a saw. Saws are very useful for processing wood quickly with minimal wastage. Now, when looking for a saw, I'm a big fan of this. This is the Baco saw, and it is designed to cut dead wood. There are two types of blades with a saw. The first is live wood or green wood, and the second is dead wood. The way you tell the difference is green wood saws 
have rounded edges, deadwood saws have pointed edges. There are many different types of saws, but I recommend the Baco as it is small. This is the Baco Laplander. It is small, portable, and is designed for bushcraft and fieldcraft. Now saws can be trusted to beginners, which is why they're so great. Something like an ax takes practice or even a knife, but a saw you can give to almost anyone with minimal training. Great thing about saw is you don't need to worry about passing it. It's also very easy and safe to keep as the blade is stowed away. When deploying a saw, we're gonna do what we always do, which is carefully and methodically. We're gonna press and deploy the blade away from us. When using the saw, there are some notes. First is the first cut is always away from you. Saws such as this can cut in both directions, but some saws are only designed to cut in one direction, along with files. Files are only meant to be used in one direction. A lot of people don't know that. So when cutting with a saw, that first cut is crucial. So to make a safe first cut, we can do what's called an overhand position. That way, if the blade jumps, it's blocked by our arm. When we are cutting, we're going to cut in a V shape. If this is the log, many people want to cut directly down into it, and that's not efficient. It causes the blade to heat up, which then can put it at risk of bending or becoming brittle. So to do this, and also increases the risk of jumping. Jumping meaning when the blade comes out and jumps at you. Thus putting you at risk if you saw like this, that it could jump over and cut your hand. So when cutting a log, we're going to make our first cut at an angle with our overhand grip. And then we are going to do a few cuts. Then we are going to cut like this. And then like this at 45, 30 to 45 degree angles. And that means that we are creating we are creating a V shape as we're cutting. So if this is your log, you cut, cut, you have a V, and then you cut down. You cut, cut, have a V, and then you cut down. And that's a very quick and efficient way to cut wood. Another thing we can do is when cutting limbs off of trees, we're going to make two separate cuts, and we're gonna let physics and gravity do the work. The first cut is going to be underneath, about a few inches away from where we actually want the log to fall. The second cut is going to be on top, about, let's say about eight to 10 inches down, depending on the size of the branch that you're cutting. This is going to create a fracture point and the limb is going to fall off. So be clear and ready when that limb does fall. Not only is this very simple and safe, as it doesn't mean that you're reaching up and cutting a limb and it can fall, it's controlled, but it's also a lot healthier for the tree. So right here, we have a good example of some dead wood. First thing we're going to do is we're gonna make that first scoring cut away from us on an angle. I'm putting my hand over the top and cutting down. We are then gonna come back on the same mark and cut again in one direction. The reason for this is when we are fighting back, that's where we put ourselves in a vulnerable position for that blade to skip up. Again, luckily we're guarding ourselves, but if our hands were here, like it's commonly done, it's that back motion that can come up and skip and cut our hand. So we're gonna make a few scoring marks. Now that we started, we're now gonna come the other direction. And now I'm cutting in both directions. A few cuts on one angle, coming over. A few cuts like this. Back over, a few cuts, and we're coming back and forth, like so. Another reason I love the simple saw is that they're very safe to use or safer to use than a knife or an ax, especially when it's dark or when you're tired. So if you have to, you can use the saw to cut blocks of firewood and process them. Now, whereas the knife and the saw 
may be crucial to our personal survival and are extremely important, it's the axe that builds civilizations and makes community possible. With an axe, you can start a village or a civilization. Now the axe is an incredibly hard tool to master, but when you know what you're doing with it, it's absolutely essential to group survival and at least one person has to have an axe on them. Now the axe takes a lot of training, a lot of practice and safety is paramount. We never use an axe after dark or when we're tired. The types of axes that I'm a fan of, I have two here. This one I've had for years, which is a composite carbon fiber lightweight axe. The next is an absolutely beautiful handcrafted Granfords of Brooks of Sweden. This isn't just a tool, it's an absolute work of art. But whichever one you're using, make sure that you practice. In terms of types of axes and size, we have felling axes, splitting axes, double sided axes. But what, we'll, what we will be focusing on is the forest axe, which is an axe no smaller than your forearm. Otherwise it becomes what we call a pocket or hatchet axe. This one is a little bit longer. Think smaller for handwork and longer for splitting and felling. This is the Scandinavian forest axe and it is a fantastic mix of both as it has a one pound head. It's very maneuverable. I can use it for hand carving, but I can also use it for felling as well. Same with this axe. It can be used in the hand and for cutting down small amounts of trees as well as splitting. Some rules with our axe. If you have a wood axe, it's paramount that we take care of the wood, the grain, with some sort of, sort of oil. After every use, I ensure my axe is dry. I then oil it with boiled linseed oil every now and again, but I definitely oil and clean the head. We never use our axe as a hammer. Composite ones can be sometimes for light work, but we never use a wooden handled axe as a hammer. It loosens the wood and the last thing we want is to lose the ability to use our axe. We also want to make sure that we keep and carry our axe in a safe manner. My preferred way is on my pack, you carry it on the outside with the blade facing away from you like such. That way, if anything happens, that blade is away. When I carry around my ax, I always have the sheath on when it's not in use, removing it and putting it on with care. I also like to carry the ax, such as a walking stick, with the blade facing away from me like so. If I need to carry it on my belt or on my side, I always have that blade facing away from me. But oftentimes, unless it's for finding wood, the ax will be staying with the camp. Some notes when we use our ax is we always want to be careful where this head is uh, swinging. The knives can give very nasty cuts. The saws can give very bad light cuts and abrasions but the ax can make you honestly a casualty or kill you. An ax wound is horrible to stitch up and it can cut through bone like your teeth munching on a carrot. It's very easy. Therefore, when we're using the ax, we have to be aware of our surroundings and those around us. A good way to do this is to stand upright with our ax pointed towards the sky and fully motion our arm to make sure that we are clear of branches or anything. That way when swinging an ax, we can ensure that we keep ourselves safe and those around us. Something else to be cautious of is we want to get as low as possible with our ax. Very rarely we'll be standing up, a common mistake when splitting wood. Instead, we want to get low with our ax as to ensure if our swing misses, 
the axe will go into the ground and not into ourselves. Therefore, if I'm felling a tree, I'm getting low with the work, swinging rather than standing up and swinging in such a way that it can cut through into my body. Let's go over some cuts and uses with the axe. I have a fantastic, very tall piece of dead wood that I'm going to fell here. As discussed before, we are going to first clear the area, make sure that my axe has enough room to swing. And I'm gonna get down to the base, like so. I'm then going to cut a V-notch in the direction lowest that I want it to fall, and then I will cut an upper notch just above it, and it will fall in that direction. Now that I'm ready to cut, I can remove my sheath, place it on the ground, or on my person. Before cutting, I'm going to ensure that my axe blade will go into the ground and not into any part of myself or somebody else. I'm gonna get close that I can just put the ax on the other side of my work so I'm not reaching, I'm not cutting super close to my body. I'm going to look at where I'm going to swing, holding the ax head on the lower half for felling, and again, up close for detailed work. I'm then gonna look at where I'm gonna swing, make sure I'm clear, looking at where I'm gonna be cutting, not at the ax head, but at the work. I'm cutting straight in and I'm not notching with the ax, but I'm cutting directly into it and straight out. Now I'm gonna come from underneath and you're going to create a nice V on the bottom side. Now that we have our first cut, I'm gonna be cutting just above Again, making sure I'm not going into my leg, reaching just beyond. Coming underneath. Allowing the ax to do the work. Coming underneath. Now that we've got our tree, we are going to get our saw and process some of this dead wood for splitting. Now that we've processed some wood using our ax and our saw, 
we can use if we don't have a splitting um, stump we can use a fallen tree or this one that we just cut so when splitting with an axe it's paramount when we come down there's no risk of this hitting us again I like the rule of you should be able to just reach over your work and come down the first way and the simplest way to split wood is we are going to take our work we are going to match the axe like so and we are going to come down at the same time with the work and the axe simultaneously once it's in we're going to split open like so we can then do that again coming from this side and it's a very simple safe way that we can split wood for a beginner this is probably the best way as with all of the tools it's paramount that we maintain them properly I discussed about oiling the handle of the axe as well as the uh, head but also with our knives and our other blades when you get back from your bushcraft trip or in the field it's really important that we clean off everything uh, don't use soap or harsh chemicals just water and a rag clean off the blades and then after use a simple oil um, a gun lubricant like CLP or um, even WD-40, Cosmoline, some sort of oil just to put onto the blade, let it soak in. If you have to sharpen your blade, which isn't often, don't overdo it. That, that's an entire different discussion. But some notes on sharpening, don't do it often, uh, only if the blade needs it. If there's a nick in the blade, then sharpen it. If you do feel that it's not as sharp as it should, uh, you, you, by sharp I mean if you should be scared to touch that blade with your thumb if it's blunt enough that you can kind of run your thumb over the top of it don't go doing this by run over I mean like this do not go down that will cut yourself then give it a good sharpen don't use angle grinders or belt grinders it's a, that's a very easy way to hurt yourself make a mistake unless you're trained and you know what you're doing with lots of practice the problem with power machinery is you've got your hands close to the blade and they can jump so don't go using a belt sander use their um, like pre-sharpening tools with the angles built in them those are okay but honestly guys a lot of fun of it is get a whetstone learn how to do it get a sharpening stone different grits you 800 600 2000 1000 2000 3000 and learn how to correctly sharpen that blade it's really rewarding I, i'm still working on it um, actually i just sharpened my other axe and my three knives and for the first time i actually did a half decent job but it's so rewarding when you can get that blade perfectly sharp and when you do it yourself if you have a friend learn from them but when it comes to sharpening invest in the in the right traditional stuff take your time with it have pride with it um, and then when you get that clean cut out in the field, a uh, cut of wood, obviously not yourself, it's that ever more rewarding. Once you sharpen it, again, treat it with that oil. Uh, that's going to protect it from rust. And uh, yeah, take care of your equipment. And as always, it will take care of you. So there you have it. An introduction into how to use your knife, your folding saw, and your axe as well. As always with all these skills guys, make sure that you go out and you practice. Especially with that axe, it is incredibly difficult to master. I myself have so much to learn about it and I'm very excited to have that tool and be able to come out and learn as well. 
as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we're building a community. And for closing thoughts today, not everything has to be about an end goal or making money or going somewhere. Um, Alan Watts, a philosopher said that it's not about the finale, it's not about the finish. Um, the dancing of the dance is the dance itself. Otherwise life would be one big crashing chord, um, but it's, it's a song, it's, it's the whole thing. So not everything has to be about that career, that money, that end goal. And if you're looking to further yourself in that career or that end goal, just remember that if you do it with passion, with pride, and the expectation of nothing in return, people are gonna see that, and the rest of that path will be forged uh, for you. And if you're there, you're ready, you're passionate, and you take advantage of it, it's gonna happen. But don't put those passions with the stress of this has to work out, this has to be my career, it has to be amazing money, it has to be all these things. Just go out and enjoy the thing, do it with passion, and I guarantee everything else will fall into line and enjoy the journey. Just go out there, do it, and just enjoy doing it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you next time.